Today I want to talk about the snatch and specifically I want to talk about how your technique can feel different or maybe off during that final phase leading up to competition. We call that the realization phase and in this video we're going to cover the following topics. First, how increased mobility can influence your start position. Second, how changes in where you store tension as a result of training volume, abandoning weightlifting straps, and increases in anxiety can affect your pull. And finally, how you can improve your consistency by examining your mental approach to training during this phase. So by definition, a realization phase marks a shift in our primary focus to training sessions that will allow you to snatch and clean and jerk the most possible weight in comp. So this typically is marked by a sharp decrease in volume across the strength variations, primarily squatting and pulling. And with that, the body begins to heal. Uh, also, it's likely that you're moving down in body weight as you approach competition. So during our accumulation and transmutation phases, for example, our lifters are allowed to train three to 5% over their weight class. As we move into the realization phase, our athletes are required to train just at about one and a half to two percent over their competition body weight. So that makes it easier for them to adjust their balance points at the lower body weight and gives them an easy water cut prior to competition day. So ideally in the realization phase, you should feel fast, confident, precise in your lifts, but there are a few things that we want you to be aware of that can negatively impact your performance. First, with a reduction in overall training volume, your flexibility and mobility may improve. You may find that your hips, shoulders, and ankles feel more mobile and that your lower back feels recovered and strong. Looking at Wes's setup in the snatch, when he feels recovered, he tends to set up with his hips in a deeper position than he normally does. So this is his attempt to replicate some of that same tension he feels in the hip flexors when he's under normal training load. So sitting deeper in your start position can lead to your shoulders setting up too far behind the bar and can result in the bar traveling away from your body in the initial lift. One of the most important things you can do in your realization phase is to film yourself from a side profile and to make sure that you haven't altered your start position as a result of this increase in mobility. And as you're evaluating your snatch, I want you to focus on three key points. First, where the bar originates. That's the point at the end cap of the bar where the plates initially break from the floor. Second, locate the end cap of the bar at the power position. In the pull, this will be marked by where the bar arrives at the crease of the hip. If we drop a line from that point back down, we want to see the end cap of the bar line up over the middle of the foot. More specifically, we want the bar to be lined up in front of the ankle or malleolus bones and behind the joint in the first big toe that metatarsal phalangeal. And third, we want you to locate in the lift where the bar travels the furthest away from your body. That should be somewhere around shoulder height as you transition into your overhead squat. Ideally, the bar at this point has not traveled forward from its point of origin. So if you're to drop a line down from this third point, it should line directly up with the first point you identified in that initial lift. When you feel more mobile, it's also common to pull yourself out of quality start positions where your core is no longer properly pressurized. The tightness you're used to feeling in those erector muscles during cycles of heavy squats and pulls may not be there in your realization phase. And this can cause you to seek that same tightness in your erectors when you set up and inadvertently pull yourself out of a properly pressurized core. To pressurize your core properly, Start by taking a 50% diaphragmatic breath, and then recruit the muscles that make up your pelvic floor. Then assign 180 degree brace through the transverse abdominis. Then, as you set up to the barbell, pull your lats and subs cap down, making sure that your erectors are tense to then complete that 360 degree brace. It's best to include accessory exercises that target this practice, like dead bugs, side planks, and straight arm plank variations. Tension can be broken up into two parts. First, one of the few comforts that we allow our lifters is to have weightlifting straps. And we strip them of that comfort within the first week of the realization phase. 
And as the weight gets heavier, it becomes harder to maintain relaxed and passive arms. In the snatch, the arms are just conduits for force, but in the absence of straps, you tend to grip the bar a little tighter, and that manifests in tension throughout the arms and into the shoulders, which can ultimately alter bar path or slow your transition into your overhead squat position. The second part, we know that one of the primary areas we carry tension as a result of stress and anxiety is in the neck, traps, and shoulders. Yoga and body work are great tools to combat tension, and Wes will work with our in-house team one to two times a week during his realization phase to make sure that he's not carrying any additional stress up in the traps. Keep in mind that getting a flush to return to a state of normalized tension is perfectly acceptable and something that we do with Wes and our other lifters. However, you don't want to realign fibers with super deep massage during the realization phase. As you near your competition date, that anxiety in your traps, you just need to be aware during the setup that you're not shrugging, that you're assigning tension properly through the lats. It's helpful at liftoff to think about holding somewhere between 30 and 40% of your 1RM snatch in your hands. So when warming up for your next snatch session, perform a couple halt snatches using that 30 to 40% number. Wes, for example, wants to feel approximately 70 kilos worth of weight in his hands prior to liftoff. When performing the halt snatch, you want to start by assigning tension in the start position and then just break the bar one inch from the floor and halt for one to two seconds before completing your snatch. When done correctly, you should feel tension through your lats, your core should feel braced, your back should be flat, and your arms should feel passive and relaxed. Your mental preparation for competition does not start the day of or the night before your meet. It starts when you begin your realization phase. Coaches, be aware that your athletes may have a tendency to lift to avoid a miss. Mentally, this is a really important distinction. The fear of bombing out is much worse than going six for six is good. Anxiety can result in tempo changes, specifically in making your initial pull too slow and mechanical or too fast, cutting the pull short. You need to attack every lift with confidence and with a mindset where missing is not even an option. The other thing we encouraged Wes to do, which made a profound difference in his competition mindset, was to lift with joy, to make that a point of emphasis where every lift that he approached, he cracked a smile prior to walking up to the bar. You'll notice this in some of the Cal Strength videos. The heavier the weight gets, the more excited and the happier Wes gets to make that attempt. Best of luck in your next competition. We think that if you follow some of these guidelines during your realization phase for how to account for technical changes, you'll be very well served, you'll lift big weights, and you'll have fun doing it.